Hi, I'm Alistair Chapman, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at using the Atomos Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus with the Sony FX6 or FX9. The Atomos Ninja 5 is a compact 5-inch HDR video monitor with built-in recording capabilities. It has an HDMI input and output, and it can record using several different codecs, including ProRes, Avid DNX, H.265, as well as ProRes RAW on affordable and readily available SSDs. The Ninja 5 can also be expanded using clip-on modules, such as the Atom X SDI module and the Atom X Sync module. If you want to record the SDI RAW output of the FX6 or FX9 with the Ninja 5 or Ninja 5 Plus, you'll need the Atom X SDI adapter. And this can be purchased on its own if you already have a Ninja 5, or you can purchase the Atomos Ninja 5 Pro Kit. If you purchase the Atom X SDI module separately, then in addition, you'll also need to purchase an SDI RAW license from the Atomos website. Don't forget that in addition, you'll need to purchase some SSD drives to record on. A list of compatible SSDs can be found here. Before going any further, it's always a good idea to ensure that the firmware in your Ninja 5 or Ninja 5 Plus is up to date. The latest firmware can be found on the product support page of the Atomos website. To update your Ninja 5, simply place the firmware update file on an SSD drive, insert the drive into the Ninja 5, and follow the on-screen prompts. If you purchase the Ninja 5 Pro Kit, you can skip this next part as your SDI RAW license is pre-installed and activated. If you purchase the Ninja 5 and Atom X SDI modules separately, you'll need to create an Atomos user account and register your Ninja 5. To do this, you'll need to find its activation ID number. Touch the screen where the timecode is shown, drag the menu bar to the left until you get to activation and select it. You can then use the QR code or you can go to the registration page of the Atomos website to create an account and register your Ninja 5. Once you have registered the Ninja 5, you can then select it from the registered devices in your account and activate ProRes recording, the ProRes RAW codec, and in addition, purchase other recording options, including the SDI RAW license. In each case, you'll be provided with a downloadable token that you should place on an SSD, then put this in your Ninja 5 to activate the option. When using the Ninja 5 with the FX6 or FX9, you can choose to record either ProRes or ProRes RAW. If you work with Avid editing systems, you can also choose Avid DNX if that's preferred. It might not always be necessary to record using ProRes RAW, even when you need a very high quality final output. For example, if you want to capture S Cinetone footage at the highest quality, then recording to ProRes HQ on the Ninja 5 would be a great choice. ProRes HQ can also be used when shooting with S-Log3 to record a very robust 10-bit 422 file that will hold up very well to extensive post-production grading. Because ProRes files are supported in all of the professional edit and grading applications that exist today, it's a very good codec choice if you are ever unsure of how your footage will be handled in post-production. For many types of production, you may not even need ProRes HQ. ProRes 422 offers slightly smaller files with only a very minimal and often typically unnoticeable loss of quality. For even more compact files, you could use ProRes LT. If you're using the ProRes codec, you can also take advantage of the Ninja 5's pre-roll and time-lapse functions. Pre-roll or cache record stores up to six seconds of video from before the moment you press the record button and seamlessly includes that in your recordings. It's great for capturing unpredictable events such as lightning in a thunderstorm. Wait for the lightning, then quickly press record, and you've captured the lightning strike without having to record for hours on end. You could also consider purchasing the H.265 codec license. H.265 is a state-of-the-art codec that allows you to record at high quality levels with compact file sizes. If you choose all I 10-bit 422 H.265, then you can have recordings that are still very high quality, but take less storage space. Or if you need compact proxy files to send to a client over the internet, one of the smaller H.265 options could be a good choice. The great thing about the Ninja 5 is that all of these different codec options are available in one device. 
For those times where you want to squeeze every last drop of image quality out of the camera, you can record using ProRes RAW. The camera outputs the RAW as 16-bit linear data. The Ninja 5 then takes this 16-bit linear data and using a sophisticated, visually lossless process, converts this to 12-bit log RAW. A 12-bit recording can contain up to four times the tonal values that a 10-bit recording has. These finer levels help ensure that you're getting the very best from the camera. ProRes RAW is a great choice whenever you want to do any extensive grading and image manipulation. There are two versions of ProRes RAW, ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ. For the best image quality, I recommend using ProRes RAW HQ. But should you find that you're low on storage space, then you have the option to use standard ProRes RAW, which is around the same size as normal ProRes 422. Low quality SDI cables are a common cause of issues, especially with RAW. So do ensure that you're using a very high quality SDI cable to connect the camera to the Atom X SDI module on the Ninja 5. With the FX9 to output RAW, you must have the optional XDCA FX9 attached to the camera. To enable the RAW output from the camera, the camera must be in the Cine EI mode. You will also need to go to the menu or status pages and select RAW only or RAW plus an internal recording codec from the codec options. As well as outputting RAW, it's also possible to record to the camera's internal cards at the same time. And this might be useful if you need a conventional video clip as well as the RAW clips. You can record ProRes RAW at any frame rate up to 60 frames per second using either 4K DCI or UHD. The Ninja 5's input source should be set to SDI. If set correctly, it will detect the RAW input signal and offer to automatically switch to ProRes RAW. There are several monitoring options that you can use when recording ProRes RAW. The monitoring option that you choose also changes what the Ninja 5's waveform display will be measuring. When the monitoring is set to native, you'll be monitoring the native S-Log3 images that will be low contrast and lack color. The waveform will be measuring the S-Log3 levels where the normal exposure for a white card would be 61% and skin tones will normally be around 50%. If you choose Rec. 709, the RAW is converted to Rec. 709 which has a very limited dynamic and viewing range. The wide dynamic range RAW recordings will normally exceed what can be displayed via Rec. 709, so I don't normally recommend the use of this display mode, as sometimes highlights will appear clipped on the screen when in fact the recordings are fine. In this mode, the waveform measures the Rec. 709 levels. The waveform scale is in nits or brightness, where 100 nits would be the normal exposure for a white card. Skin tones would be around 60 to 70 nits. If you choose HLG, that's hybrid log gamma. And this is a type of high dynamic range gamma. So now you're much better able to see the full range of the images that you're capturing. Highlights will only be clipped if the RAW itself is clipping. However, HLG has a highlight roll off. So the very brightest highlights will have very little contrast. When using HLG, the waveform display scale is 0 to 100%, and a white card would normally be exposed at approximately 50%. Skin tones are going to be around 35 to 40%. My preferred option is PQ. Like HLG, this is a high dynamic range gamma. So once again, you'll be able to see the full range of the raw capture. PQ is the HDR standard used for the majority of HDR productions. There'll be more contrast in the highlights with PQ, so it's easier to judge how your highlights may look after grading. The waveform display scale is in nits. When using PQ, a white card would be exposed, so it's at 100 nits, and skin tones will be around 45 nits. The final option is LUT. You can load up to eight of your own 3D cube LUTs onto the Ninja 5, and then these LUTs can be added to the S-Log3 or RAW. To add LUTs to the Ninja 5, you should place them on an SSD drive. Then attach the drive to the Ninja and go to the Monitor Options and select the LUTs tab. Then choose one of the eight LUT memories to load your LUT into. Next, select the folder symbol to view the LUT files on the SSD and choose the LUT you wish to load into that memory. 
Now you've loaded a LUT, you can use it to monitor the RAW. The waveform display will show the LUT brightness levels. The exact correct exposure level will vary greatly depending on the LUT that you're using. The waveform scale is a 0 to 100% exposure scale. With most conventional LUTs, a white card will tend to be somewhere in the region of 75 to 80% and skin tones somewhere between 60 and 70%. As an alternative to using the waveform to measure the exposure, you can also use the Ninja 5 Zebras. Like the waveform display, the Zebras reflect the selected monitoring mode, so you'll need to adjust your Zebra levels to suit your chosen monitoring mode. When shooting using log or raw, if you're unsure about your exposure, it's generally preferable to shoot a little brighter rather than darker. In post-production, you'll be able to adjust the brightness of your footage. If your exposure is too dark and you try to make it brighter, it can become noisy and it may be difficult to grade. But if it's a little bit too bright, this is rarely a problem. Once you've shot your raw material, you'll need to take it into post-production for grading. ProRes RAW is currently directly supported in Apple's FCPX, as well as Adobe Premiere, Edius, Assimilate Scratch, and Avid Media Composer. If you wish to grade or edit your ProRes RAW footage in a different application, then you'll need to transcode the ProRes RAW to another codec. One way to do this is within FCPX using the File Share option. Simply select all of the files you wish to transcode then via the settings view of the inspector, set the camera LUT to off, set the color space to Rec 709, and then select File, Share, and choose the codec you want and where the files should be saved. When transcoding the ProRes RAW, I recommend the use of the ProRes 4444 or ProRes 4444XQ codecs, as these are both 12-bit codecs and will retain virtually all of the RAW's original picture information. When working with ProRes RAW material in FCPX, you should set your library to Wide Gamut HDR. Once you've imported your ProRes files into the library, you can change the look of your footage by changing the LUT that's applied to the clips by the Clip Inspector. In addition, you can also adjust the post-production exposure level by selecting a different ISO value. In Adobe Premiere, once you've imported your ProRes RAW clips, you can change whether the clips are converted to Rec. 709 or to one of several alternative gammas and color spaces using the Clip Effects control panel. In addition, you can also apply an exposure offset by changing the exposure value. Editing ProRes RAW material is then no different to any other type of video file. You can grade it and adjust it, using your chosen software's color tools, knowing that you've captured the camera's output at its highest possible quality level. I hope you found this video helpful. ProRes RAW is a great way to record your camera's output. But don't forget that the Ninja 5 can also record using other codecs, including normal ProRes HQ, and for some applications, this may be a better choice as it offers very high quality in a universally supported file.